What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today is a special day because this is the very first TC Customs 2021 Ford Bronco. In this particular video, we're going to go over everything about this specific Outer Banks Bronco and we're also going to show you what TC Customs has done to it to make it a little bit different. Uh, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and just kind of start with the front and what we've got going on up here. Obviously, this is a carbonized gray 2021 Ford Bronco. This is going to be the 2.7 liter engine we're going to cover here in just a second, but because it is the Outer Banks, as you can see, it's got the uh, painted black piano black front grille. And as you can see, this one does has the plastic front bumper, but because of the trim level that it's got, you do have front parking sensors as well as a 360 degree camera located right there. In fact, I want to show you a fun little fact about that little front camera is that if you, as you're driving down the road, if you do get bugs and guts and stuff like that on there, you can simply hit the normal windshield wiper fluid. And as you can see, it actually goes in and sprays off the front camera to make sure that it is always nice and clean. So yeah, it does leave a little bit of a mess, but that is a fun little party trick if you did not know about it. Now let's kind of go over a couple of other things. This is going to be a detailed video, but I don't want to go over every single thing about the Bronco because that video would be about two or three hours long. Uh, but one of my favorite features are going to be these trail sites. So very similar to how you have a rifle site where you can look down and you kind of know where everything is. That's one of the purposes of this so you can kind of see where you're going and you also know where the corner of your front hood is. Um, and speaking of front of the hood, you do have a very highly sloped front windshield. The reason for that is obviously um, for better visibility when off-roading and a, a couple of other reasons. But as we're looking at the windshield, I do want to point out to you, you do have your camera system located in that front mirror, uh, or actually technically is behind the mirror, but that camera is designed to do a couple of different things. It's designed to help you look for pedestrians as they are crossing the road under a certain speed, of course, but it's also there for lane keeping assist, which is designed to bounce you back and forth in the lane. Lane centering, this vehicle does not have. None of the Broncos do. Um, and I have a couple of suspicions on why that is, but nonetheless, it has the safety feature that will bounce you back in the lane in case you kind of doze off or something along those lines. Now let's talk about the wheel and tire combination. This is a set of Toyo Open Country AT3 tires. This is what TC Customs is done to this specific Bronco. Now these tires are going to be a 275-70 R18 and what's crazy is you can actually see this is a bone stock suspension system. I'm going to come back to the suspension here in just a second. I got some really important news on that but I do want to showcase to you the wheels themselves. These are a set of Fuel Rebel 6 wheels and uh, these are obviously in the anthracite gray is what they call it and you'll notice that anthracite matches the carbonized gray to a T on the Ford and that's one of the reasons I actually have this exact same wheel, different ball pattern, but that exact same wheel on my 2017 Ford Raptor. So uh, as you know, I'm very, very partial to this particular wheel and tire combination. But as I mentioned to you just a second ago, this suspension system is bone stock. Now Zone Off-Road, which is the sister company to BDS suspension system, they already have a one inch leveling kit available for this Bronco. In fact, I'll link that down for you guys below if you want to take a look at that. My understanding is that leveling kit does fit the non sas Squatch suspension system, the non-Badlands suspension system. So basically, if you have the Bilstein uh, position-sensitive suspension system, it's not going to fit that particular setup. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll put that on the screen and correct myself, but that is my understanding of it. And they also happen to have a two-inch lift kit, spacer lift kit. So basically just a spacer in the front, spacer in the rear uh, that is designed to fit the exact same Broncos. And what I've also mentioned to you, this is not a Sasquatch Bronco. This is a truly just an outer band with uh, just a couple of different options on it. We moved to the other side so it would be easier for me to get in the actual driver's seat, but I want to point out to you so that since this is not a Sasquatch version, you've modified the wheels and tires. There is no leveling kit or lift kit. This is a bone stock suspension system. I just kind of want to showcase to you, you do have all of your crash bars still intact, which is so crazy that you're not having any um, rubbing issues or anything like that, and you didn't even have to touch your actual crash bars, which I think is a very, very important piece for me specifically. Not everybody. I wouldn't mind removing the front one. But the cool part about these crash bars on these Broncos is they are readily removable and you can readily move them back in there if you want to. As you saw with a video that we did with the Bronco Nation, you actually can unbolt the crash bars and then do whatever you need to and then bolt them back up whenever you're done. 
that is an interesting idea. Maybe have a different set of wheels and tires for the street, and then a different wheels and tires and different you know setup for the crash bars for off-roading. So something to think about. Before we show you the inside of the vehicle, I do want to showcase this. This is going to be the keyless entry system for the new Bronco. So with like the F-150, you had something that was built into the actual B pillar. This is very different. This is basically the same kind of keyless entry system that you could buy out of the parts department on like a 2008 Ford Focus. And uh, if you peel this off, my understanding is there's no hole behind it. There's no wires ridden uh, to it. That This is a battery operated thing. So I'm going to be curious to see how this lasts, you know, uh, over the long haul. But nonetheless, that's what you've got. Now, this particular version, as you just saw, does have your keyless entry system. So you can tap here to lock it, stick your hand in there to unlock it. That is a pretty cool setup. Now, I want to showcase the inside of the vehicle. But before we showcase the inside, I want to showcase the top to you. So as you can see, this is a soft top. And this is an actual, you know, relatively early build as far as the Bronco is concerned. Hence the reason that it's actually here at the dealership. This is the Ford factory soft top. And just kind of want to showcase you have two different latches that you have can latch all the way down. Uh, but I just want to showcase to you that even with just one person, it's very easy to open and close the top. And as you lock down this side, come around to the other side, lock that side, it is a pretty cool little setup. Now, my favorite part about this particular soft top is that you can actually open it. I'm a little bit taller. I'm six foot three because, you know, i got to mention that in nearly every video. But as I'm six foot three sitting in the car, with in the middle of traffic you know what i decide i i want to i want to go ahead and open up the top so hit both of your latches and then literally without getting out of the vehicle i know i'm a little bit taller not everybody have that ability but it is really nice on my side to be able to open that top while i'm driving down the road now to close it you'll obviously probably need to get out especially for safety but uh keep in mind don't ever open that while you're moving make sure you do it at a stoplight or a stop sign the last thing you need to be doing is unlatching that thing while you're driving down the road that will cause a big issue with you know just think of a parachute all right, so as far as the soft top is concerned, moving it all the way to the rear position, I started a little bit on the other side already, but I want to kind of showcase to you how do you get the soft top to go all the way in that back position. There's going to be a lever right here, and if you press it hard enough, it actually moves both sides, both the passenger and the driver's side. You want to make sure you press that down all the way. Then the next thing you want to do is lift up here, and there's going to be a whole lot of, as you can see, I've already done some of them. You've got these little buckles here. You want to make sure you undo the buckles all the way around and then flip this thing up now in full disclosure this is my first time actually um, using the soft top and taking it all the way back so uh, hopefully <laughs> this doesn't turn into much too much of a disaster but as you can see the next thing that I want to do is I want to peel the back side off here I want to do the same over here and then simply slide the the uh, window out of the the front of the vehicle here we go, just trying to make sure we don't damage the, the actual soft top or the vehicle itself. All right, so now that we've got that taken care of, let's see what our next step is gonna be. I have a feeling that it might have something to do with removing this panel. Once again, uh, <laughs> if this turns out to be uh, a disaster, you, you'll know why, because I've not actually had a chance to do this yet. All right, so now that we've got it in this position, let's just see if we can safely flip it back and see if it goes into the position yep something's got to happen nope oh this this thing just needs to come out there we go so does this piece slide out okay so yeah so this piece slides out as well i can go ahead and tell you right now uh with my soft top that i've got ordered i'll be taking it to the first step a lot but i'm not sure how many times i'm going to be taking it all the way back like we're doing and demonstrating right now all right so now that we've got that whole rear panel removed Let's see if this works like I hope it does. And there we go. All right, so as, oh, and it locks. I don't know if you heard that, but it actually locks in that rear position as well. So I'll be very, very frank with you guys. If I'm not an expert in something, I will actually tell you guys, I'm not an expert in this top removal yet, but we will be, we will be very, very soon. So there you go. She is actually locked and loaded in that very, very far position. And if it sounds like I'm out of breath, that's probably because I am fat boy <laughs> and Alabama heat don't mix too well. But 
nonetheless that's what it looks like to remove it and i would assume that it, the process is going to be the same but in reverse to get the top back up so let's take a look at the inside all right, on the inside of the vehicle, there's a couple of things that you'll note. The very first thing that I wanna to showcase to you is the roast and black leather interior. This is gonna be one of the few options that this customer had upgraded to. Now, what I absolutely love this black and brown setup, I think it looks much better in this than it does in the actual F-150 Sport Appearance Package. Uh, but the other thing that you need to realize is that it also has a blue stitching on the seat itself. In addition to that, you also happen to have these grab handles have got blue accents as well as the air conditioner vents. The reason they've done that is if it's an Outer Banks, it's going to have blue accents, period, end of paragraph. It is going to be a Badlands, it's going to have orange accents. So each trim level has different colors to denote what trim level you're sitting in, even if you can't see the sticker from the outside. Okay, all right. So one thing I just realized about the Bronco is when you got the top off, it's a sunny day and it's hot outside, this leather gets warm really, really quickly. So my butt is on fire right now. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to talk a little bit more about what's going on with the dashboard. As you can see, this one does have the 12-inch infotainment screen, which means that it's going to be a high or a luxe package. Now, the fact that it does not have adaptive cruise control tells me automatically that it does not have the Lux package because the Lux package comes with a couple things like the adaptive cruise control, Bang & Olufsen premium audio sound system, and a lot more that you can see right there on the screen. But you'll also notice that this is probably one of the Broncos with the fewest number of hero switches that I've ever seen. So you've got the trail, con trail turn assist and traction control and your hazards. That's it. You don't have a locker in the front. You don't have a locker in the rear. You don't have the stabilizer bar disconnect so just keep that in mind as well but one thing i do like is you're looking at the air conditioner you do have dual climate control so that way if your spouse is hot they can turn it to 76 if i'm uh, you know vice versa you, you see what i'm saying everybody can have their own perfect temperature as far as the instrument cluster is concerned every one of these broncos are going to have a very very comparable instrument cluster, but you will notice that the GOAT modes goes over any type of terrain. Those modes will actually vary based on what trim level you pick up. So for instance, this particular vehicle has the sand mode. It has mud and ruts, slippery, sport, eco, and then the normal or the Bronco mode. Keep in mind that as you pick up a Badlands or a Wild Track, everything is going to change based on how you option the vehicle itself. All right, so as far as the rear is concerned, you'll notice that black and roast is actually carried into the back seat. But one thing that I do love is because this is a higher trim level, you do have that center console with your uh, two cup holders back here. Now, once again, I've already mentioned this in the 10 things that I hate about the Bronco video that we made is that this vehicle does not have air conditioning in the center console. Your air conditioning vents are gonna be located down down here on the floor and it also works as a heater if you want them to so it's just something that you need to kind of realize as you're going about life's highway so now the next thing i want to showcase to you is the operation of the rear seat now you do have the ability to fold it down flat and as you can see this one folds down flat with just a simple uh pull of a lever and you also as you can see josh is struggling <laughs> because yes, you have to fold the headrest before you do that. But when you do that, you do pick up a decent amount of cargo space in the rear of the vehicle. And uh, so as you can see, I'm just trying to pull some of this stuff out. You can kind of see how much cargo space you have. Now it's not a load flat floor, meaning there is that hump going from the cargo area to on top of the rear seats. But uh, keep in mind, you still have plenty of room to move furniture, small pieces of furniture, <laughs> albeit, but you do have that room. Now, at, while we're still back here, I do want to showcase a couple of things. You have the tie down points all the way around in that cargo area. So if you needed to tow or tie something down, you don't to worry about your cargo sliding around in the back seat of your vehicle. Now you see how this tailgate opens. It does open to this degree, but you also have the ability to push it all the way open. And uh, what's interesting about this is one of the reasons that they selected the door to open this way instead of on the driver's side was it was all predicated on the thought that, okay, if you're parallel parking on a busy city street and you open the door and it opens up a little too far, then you don't want someone to knock the door off, which that, I mean, that kind of makes sense a little bit to me, but you also happen to have a normal door to think about as well. But that is one of the reasons that you have that ability. Now, you also happen to have an accessory ready location right here where you can open up a tailgate and, you know, store stuff on the actual tailgate itself. Now, the other thing that I want to showcase to you is located, because I've seen a couple of other YouTubers get this wrong, and I wanted to set the record straight, is that all of your four doors have a bottle opener in them. 
the two doors don't. It's going to be located in the actual C pillar. There's going to be a slit that is opened up right there where my finger is, and all you have to do is stick your hand in there and open up the bottle. Now, if you've got the top up, it's a little easier to reach it from this side, but nonetheless, you do have a functional bottle opener. It's just really, really well hidden. While we're still back here on the back side of the vehicle, I want to showcase something to you, and that is going to be your tow hitch. So this particular vehicle was equipped with the trailer towing capability, which is going to be the hitch right here. Now, I know a lot of people love this 10-speed automatic transmission. Some people hate it. I know you're like, wait, we we're just talking about towing. Why are you talking about the transmission? Well, that is the reason is because if you opt for and leave out the trailer towing capability, my understanding from what Ford is telling us is that it doesn't include any coolers in the transmission. It doesn't include any uh, uh, special intercoolers. Literally, it's just a hitch. So my thought process is, if since Ford is saying that the tow towing capability is causing some issues with being able to produce enough of them, leave that off and have someone knock it out after the market because you're still gonna be able to tow 3,500 pounds whether you have the Ford factory hitch or an aftermarket. All right, let's take a look underneath the hood of this particular Bronco. As you probably already know, if you're unless you're living under a rock, um, there are two available engines, and I also want to point out the uh, the latch to open it. So if you, uh, it's just like an F-150. Basically, stick your hand in, stick your fingers down, and slide over to the left. That's the easiest way to actually open up the hood. Now, I will tell you though, I do wish that Ford included um, hood struts for the the top, but nonetheless. The rest of this vehicle is bad to the bone, so I'm not exactly upset about that. Uh, but nonetheless, this has got the 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine, and as you can see, it makes a ton of horsepower, about 90 pound-feet of torque more than the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine does. Now, I wanna bring that up to showcase to you a couple of different things that you can possibly do to get your Bronco sped up a little bit quicker. So as you guys know, Ford's got like some crazy number, like 140,000 orders for the new Bronco. And they've actually communicated a couple of different things. And sorry for me referring to my notes, but I wanted to make sure that I got this information accurately. Um, so there are certain options and equipment and features and things like that that will cause your Bronco order to, to take a little bit longer. Um, my general rule of thumb is is that the more options you put on here, the harder it is for Ford to actually build the vehicle. So the very first thing is obviously gonna be the molded in color hard top, hence the reason this one's got the soft top on it. But that molded in color hard top tends to be the biggest issue, the biggest Achilles heel, as Ford has called it, in this particular product launch. Now, as far as the, the notes are concerned, that specific roof, they're actually saying they're going to be using 35% more soft tops for this current cycle than the molded in color hard top. Whereas Ford originally had said that, hey, we think we're gonna be able to produce roughly 80% of molded in color hard tops. Now that number's looking more like 50 or 55%. Well, that, they should still be able to build that. Well, you, what you're not thinking about is every two door Bronco in every wild track has a molded in color. So when you take that out, you basically have no hard tops left for four door Broncos that don't have it come standard equipment. Now, a couple of other things that you might wanna consider leaving off on um, the, on your specific order to hopefully help speed it up is going with a big bend, um, which is not, obviously not what we're looking at here. We've got the outer banks, but they're basically saying they're gonna be able to build more big bends and more base models and really even uh, outer banks than what they had originally thought. Now the wild track is going to be hit pretty hard where they're thinking 13 percentage points based on how many customer orders there are compared to how many they can actually produce, there's gonna be a 13% deficit on wild track. So um, if you're wanting a wild track or if you want your vehicle built sooner, I would give up that wild track and maybe go to a Badlands or something like that. Also the four door, they're gonna be able to produce nine percentage points more for the four door. The other thing that you might wanna consider is going with the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine. So that is a 32% increase. So if you step into a 2.3, they're ba basically able to build 32% more 2.3s than what customers actually have ordered in the system. So that's another great way to get your vehicle uh, built out quicker. Um, also, uh, let's see here, Sasquatch, front e-locker, trailer towing, brush guard, the modular front bumper, and the Lux package, uh, and the paint protection film, all of those are gonna be causing issues with getting your vehicle built sooner rather than later. And so that doesn't mean that they're not building it. it. They're still building those options. They're just not able to produce enough to meet the demand, 
if that makes any sense. So the easiest way to remember it is uh, simply just if you don't absolutely have to have it, if it's not a deal killer, leave it off, do it later, or just live without it. That is the best way to get your Bronco built sooner rather than later. And there you go. That is our little walk around on this particular Outer Banks 2021 Ford Bronco. And uh, if you've made it this far in the video, we really appreciate a thumbs up because it does go a long way in uh, making this video public to everybody else. It helps that algorithm, if you will. Um, and uh, also, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the YouTube channel with that bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video. Peace. Now, uh, if you've made it this far in the video and you want to laugh, the, the video's done, okay? The video's done. But I'm going to attempt to put the soft top back up the way I found it for the very first time on camera. So I'm probably going to embarrass myself, but yeah, I felt like you guys needed some comedic relief. All right, so let's do it. All right, so the first thing, let's pull this lever right here. Let's, oh, oh, what in the heck did I just do? Oh, you got to, ah, oh, see, I didn't read. There's a little sign right there that says lift. Did I release on both sides? There we go. All right, so it feels like it locked there. Let's make sure it locked on the other side. And we're going to show this to you guys in real time just to make sure that you kind of know what you're getting into with that soft top. All right, so we've got that taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way forward since it's locked down. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit this one latch on this side. We can hit the other side later. All right, so next up, I think we needed to put the rear piece in first. All right, so that's this one. All right, I do remember that the Velcro went on the top. Oh, and I see why they've got these little buckles now. That way you can line everything up. That makes actually a lot of sense. And I can't remember if I mentioned this in the video already, but this is the, uh, the Ford top. There's also a best top version. And from what I understand, it's even harder to operate on the backside. But uh, that's from what I've heard. I don't have any personal experience. All right, so we've got that taken care of. Now I see an arrow here. What in the heck does that mean? Okay, so I see this piece. Looks like it hooks in right there. I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to slide it in first. There we go. I think it, yeah, can you help me, Josh, for a second? This might be a two person deal. Yeah, so it goes like this. There we go. Okay. So it's kind of hard to align it. So we slide it all the way in. All right. Now we'll hit those buckles at the top. <laughs> okay. Now that makes a little sense. Yeah, I can see where this would get a lot easier with time. But once again, you're watching me struggle through this thing live. All right, so this piece, I am assuming. Yep, I believe that is right. Yep, got to slide it in first. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> That's why. You got to start it from a little, little further forward. All right, so once we get that. Yeah, like I said, this is... <laughs> This is probably not good YouTube content, but it is, it is real. All right, so there's that. Thank you for letting me play with your Bronco. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trust me, I am too. <laughs> now I've seen it you I've seen it done before, but this is the first time that I've done it myself. But man, she is, uh, all right, same deal as before. Start from the front. So I was trying to start just a second ago. I was trying to start from here. You got to start from actually here. So just something to keep in mind. All right. And she slides on in. Hit that front side first. Push it back. My arms are sore. <laughs> you tell it's been a minute since I've been to the gym. All 
All right, so hit those three buckles right there as well. And then tuck this piece up underneath. And then I believe you should be able to put this piece on down. Yeah, there you go. I can tell you one thing is for sure. I'm gonna only be taking it to the second, to the first position. I'm not taking it all the way back. So there you go, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed me struggle, hit that thumbs up. It's the least you can do. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Peace.